have our uh, first guest, Mr. Kerry King. Thank you for being here. New, uh, not super new, but newer Dean and Dorsey. Um, I know we've known first each other. First guest. That's cool as shit, man. Yeah, man. We've, uh, we've known each other. Cheers with my fucking time. Raiders Cup. Yeah, cheers. There you go, man. Hopefully they, uh, they get that season in this year. Like I said, with all this COVID lockdown and everything else, man, how you been spending your time? Oh, dude, I'm bored as fuck, man. <laughs> you know, we've, I, I got a sweet place to hang. You know, I've got my guitars and my amps. So I've made up a ton of music. So that's a good thing that came out of this. But um, I'm ready to see some different walls. <laughs> yeah, I bet, man. I mean, geez, man, it's, it's the whole thing's like that. I mean, thankfully, you know, Dean Guitars, you've been lucky enough to stay open the whole time. And I know you have, man. I can't believe it. Yeah, with some good leadership and some dedicated team members, man, we've been able to just keep plowing through. And, and so I feel, I feel very fortunate for that. And, uh, you know, I got to tell you, when we launched this um, Ask Harry King thing, like in the first hour, we must have had, I don't know, 175 questions. And I'm like, oh, my God, we're going to have to sift through, you know, thousands of questions. And thankfully, you know, we got a little over a thousand. And, and uh, so we picked uh, what I think are some of the best ones collectively. So, we're going to go through them and uh, let's see what you come up with. You ready? Well, I appreciate the uh, attention and I know people are jonesing for anything Slayer. So hopefully this will suffice because I'm unemployed. I don't play at Slayer anymore. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think, uh, I think I can speak on behalf of uh, myself and everyone else that I think we feel confident that uh, while Slayer may be uh, maybe in the in the rear view, that uh, there's a lot of stuff out, out, out in front of the windshield. So I'm personally excited for some of the stuff that's coming up, and, and can't wait to see uh, what you finally announce and what the next uh, next thing is for uh, Kerry King. Dude, I can't wait to play, and I, I don't even have an, any idea when that's going to be possible. Nobody no. does. Yeah. So I hope we can get back to normal. Well, I and, talked to, I talked to my manager. I kept I kept my manager because we've been friends for decades. Sure. <clears throat> and I said. Um, I know the European festivals are trying to get things going for 2021. I said, Hey, keep me in mind for, you know, they're trying to keep the 2020 lineups in 2021. So I said, keep me in mind if somebody doesn't play one of the metal festivals and they back out. It's like, I would love to go do a, a surprise performance, you know, yeah, and, and just get, you know, some popularity and fame and some, some media that way. Sure. Sure. And, you know, and the other thing too, you got to remember is, I mean, I know I don't have to tell you this, but, you know, there's travel involved and, you know, foreign countries and all kinds of things, man. So it's, uh, it's a sticky entire game. crew, dude, everything. It's, it's yeah. like, I'm not, I've heard the NFL people bitching about, you know, just logistics and they're right. How do you, how do you keep your team? How do you keep your trainers? How do you keep everybody healthy? And now it's like, how do you keep the band, the band roadies, and then everybody that works for the companies, it, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And you've got to keep everybody safe because if they're not safe, then your tour's canceled and everybody goes home anyway. Yeah, it's a crazy deal, man. But um, I feel like, uh, I mean, obviously you have some very passionate fans um, and there were some really good questions in here. I think there's some uh, some uh, pretty interesting uh, things we're going to touch on today. And and you've always been, you know, I mean, we've been friends for a while, but, you know, you've always been straight. So we'll just, uh, we'll shoot from the hip, man, and see what we come up with. Absolutely, man. Can't wait. And I'm going to do my best to to Stoked. all these uh, Instagram handles correctly. I'm probably not going to get them all, but I'm going to do my best. So um, so let's start with um, Ricardo Santoro. I think I got that right. So Ricardo asks, uh, what's your composition process for riffs and solos? It, it's kind of a simple answer. and it, It's just been the way I've done it forever. Um, riffs, and I've been very, very lucky with riffs in 2020, maybe because I can't go anywhere. I don't know. But um, riffs have certainly not been a problem. And looking forward into the future, what that means for me is I'm going to be able to cherry pick the best stuff. And it's good stuff. I've got, I've got more than two records worth of music. But to be able to go through that and cherry pick the best 11 or 12, that first record should be smoke it um so that part and it's been the same forever you know i just i just sit in a room and you know i generally don't plan on making a riff up thought in my head is yeah i would love to make a riff up but if you go in there to do that there's too much burden and you usually just suck and nothing comes out just go in there and, and let your hands for me let your hands do you know whatever they want to do and, and you're just like oh man i like that maybe i'll record that 
that. And then, you know, sometimes you just get stuck in my head. And then I think of another riff or another variation of that riff. And I got to go record that. And when I actually get to it, and all these songs are on my iPhone, by the way. Um, it's, it, it's just revisiting my phone, putting riffs that, that are friendly with each other together and um, going from there. Now, as far as leads go, throughout my career, unfortunately, being not only a, a songwriter, but a lyricist too, by the time I get to leads, it's, it's sometimes, I don't want to say an afterthought, it's never an afterthought, but, you know, it's at the end of the process because a song without vocals isn't a song we've never been an instrumental band i mean if you're gonna do one instrumental sure that's cool but you know i've got to pay attention to the lyrics and make sure the lyrics <clears throat> are up to speed with the rest of the music so you got an entirely great product then is usually when i get to have time to make up make up leads or work on leads you know i've had had some historically good ones and I've had some historically shitty ones I'll tell you <laughs> but you know it's sometimes it's, it's just a matter of time and time is not on my side at that point sure so you don't go in with a preconceived idea like I gotta write a riff today or I gotta write a solo you just kind of let it happen no and, and I don't even address solos because you know right now I'm the only lyricist because I'm the only one writing music because I'm not positive who everybody is going to be playing with me is right right so um you know, it's all on me at the moment. So actually I've got to, you know, cherry pick those songs, pick my 10 or 12 favorites and actually start trying to put lyrics onto those just to, you know, move the process forward. Um, here we have, uh, this is uh, special Steve. Yeah, special underscore Steve. Uh, special Steve wants to know, uh, Carrie, I'm, 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 I'm kind of anxious to hear this too. Um, why did you choose Dean Guitars? That, that could be a story in itself. I mean, me and you go back well over a decade. Oh, yeah. Um, me and Evan go back probably just a little less than that because I knew Evan's dad. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been friends forever, and it, the timing never worked out. <clears throat> Every time I was up for track, we always talked about it. it. You know, just never materialized. So this time, you know, the stars aligned for me and Dean to work together. And you you know, you've known me forever, and I'm a kind of guy that I like to hang with my endorsers. I like to, you know, I don't like it just to be business. You know, you're my friend. I'd, right. I'd call you and talk smack about anything under the fucking sun besides right. this. Um, and that's how I like to roll, you know. When I come to Tampa, it's me and you and Evan, and we go out and drink. We go to Evan's house and make up names for people in the pool and do stupid shit. That's what me and my friends do. And that's how I like to act with people that <laughs> Force me. I liked it. I like it to be a family. That's how um, Marshall was for me when Jim was alive. It, everybody in Marshall, I felt like I was a Marshall. You know, Kerry King Marshall. That's what I felt like. I was around him. And with you guys, I feel like Kerry King Dean. You know, we're just yeah. bros making up cool axes and, and thinking the next thing. And, you know, we have ideas for some next things that I'm anxious to get um, going. So, um, you know, for me right now, it's a great fit. Um, it's a company that has no problem looking to the future. And, you know, I love that the, the um, everything's in-house. Yeah, Everything you guys build for me yeah. is in-house. That's important. I can see it. It reminded me of BC Rich from the 80s. It yeah. was like, yeah. well, you, and that's why I like them because everything was right there. If I had a problem with anything, I'd say, hey, this piece sucks. Let's go fix it and figure out what's wrong. Yeah. Well, you've been, you've been to our shop, I mean, personally two or three times at least. I mean, especially during the R&D process. I mean, you had a big hand in creating your – your signature V. I I mean, you can't, you flew to our factory at least twice just to do that. Um, yeah. You know, a couple of days per visit, hands on with Dan Russell. I mean, one of the most talented guys in the guitar building business, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and Jeff Kiner and all the boys back in the shop who really were, well, one, I mean, excited as shit, to be honest with you. And I was excited too. I mean, even though we're friends, I was finally, I was really excited to finally have you in the, in the building and, and to get started on some of this stuff. And those guys were stoked too. So, but I think it's important for people to know that you really had a big hand in what your guitar actually was. It wasn't like, ah, just make me a V and make it look like this. Let's do that. I mean, you flew from California one time, Vegas one time. I mean, these weren't like the easiest trips to do in the world. And a day off on tour one time. Yeah. We took a day off from being on tour. We went in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was, it's important, you know, and I don't think enough people pay attention to all the the little details, you know, before I went and saw you guys. Yeah, I knew the, the fretboard lights were a thing, 
but I never knew how you guys did it. We made an option on your specific guitar where if you pull up your volume knob when the, I mean, I'm sorry, the tone knob, when your guitar is not plugged in, the lights will still turn on. However, when the guitar is plugged in, they're on constantly. So it gives a person, you know, whether it be you or, or the person that buys your guitar that doesn't plug the guitar in all the time, you just want to sit down and jam, pull the tone knob up, the lights come on. So and that came from Dan and, and uh, one of the most genius guys I've ever met, Pat Baker, out of our USA assembly shop is an electronic genius that came up with that. So, um, you know, so it's, it's really good to, it's really good to have you, man. We're excited. I know from the top down, Evan, I know his dad always wanted to work with you. You know, unfortunately that came in a little late, you know, for Elliot, you know, God rest his soul. Um, but, you know, now we're in second generation leadership. Uh, you know, we got a chance to hang out with you in Nashville the first time I think you maybe personally met Evan, um, you know, as an adult, <laughs> not as a kid uh, in Nashville on the, on the uh, Slayer Testament show. Uh, we were in town doing some other business and happened to be able to come by and see you that night. And that was a great time. So, it is. Um, so this is an interesting question. And you and I have talked about this personally, but I think a lot of people have asked me this. Um, and I think this is interesting. This is um, Esan RS wants to know, and this is, this is, this is a good question. Why Kaler over Floyd? It's a very simple answer for me. And I think for most people that have played for any amount of time, you learn on one or the other. Yep. Yep. No, seriously. I, I totally it. get that. You know, and, and my thought process when I was a kid in, in my late teens <clears throat> and I had my first Kaler put on, I think probably the, the weighing factor for me was I didn't have to cut the balls off the strings. You know, uh, I didn't have to do yeah. any, any extra, I didn't have to do anything to it. Yeah. Just put it in, lock, lock it and go. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, and, and but, so I mean, in, in the decades since then, I think there's been a gigantic move for Floyd because Floyd makes entry level stuff. And that was always Kaler's problem business wise. Um, sure. So a lot of kids had access to Floyd's. So they bought Floyd style bridges and that's what they learned on. Sure. And, you know, at the end of the day, if I went to Floyd right now, yeah, I can play it, but I'd have to rest my hand in a completely different position than I have for 40 years. Right. So it's, it's a little bit late in the game for me to wonder about things like um, that. But I'm the next one is um, Logan Guitars. This is, I, and I, I've never actually asked you this. I mean, we talked a little bit, but do you enjoy anything other than metal? Do I what? Do you enjoy anything other than metal? I'm assuming they mean music wise. Yeah. I mean, my wife listens to everything. Her dad's an audiophile, so she became an audiophile inherently. And, um, you know, when we're out, like, we'll probably be doing tonight after drinking with Dean, they'll be drinking with the wife. <laughs> and, you know, it'll be like 80s rock or 60s rock. I mean, nothing, nothing too off the wall. I mean, I mean, you're not, you're not just like you know, metal and only metal. I mean, you know, you're a pretty. No, metal. no, I mean. I have no desire to play anything other than that. But I mean, I mean, from, from goes, listening yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't listen to metal. There's only so many metal albums, and yeah, eventually I would get tired of them. Um, if there wasn't other things to listen to, like like Foghat, like Led Zeppelin, yeah, it's still heavy. It's rock. Yeah, but it's certainly not metal. Yeah, yeah, that's no, cool. <laughs> A lot of people have asked me, and I mean, you know, I know Kerry plays. He's, in, you know, he at the time he's a player, man. I mean. That all he listens to, of course. Of course. Um, well, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, when I was in high school, <clears throat> because, you know, when you're in high school, you're figuring it out, you're figuring it out, you're figuring out your spot in society, and by society, I mean in the high school, yeah, in that little society, and then beyond that, there is real society. Right. And, you know, there's all kinds of little niches, and back then, I didn't like Led Zeppelin because it was a hippie band. Yeah. You know, I, if I had a choice, I'd be Black Sabbath. You know, yeah. so I, I, I didn't I didn't get to enjoy Led Zeppelin until later in life when I said that shit don't matter. This is a good song. You're right. Right. Um, and there's a number of examples like that. That's just the one that came to mind. You know, Black Sabbath. That's, sure. you know, if you're a metal player and don't credit Sabbath with influencing you, you're fucking lying. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. Um, I mean, me. I mean, I've been I've been in this business. I was I guess I was the next generation after black sabbath even though you know our age is probably 10 years different but um you know and there's been generations since slayer came out and of course some pe people you know 
say we're influences, but I bet, and I hope those same people say Black Sabbath and Judas Priest and Iron Maiden are influences as well. Um, so this is an interesting one, and I kind of know the answer, but I kind of want to hear it from you. Um, can we expect new signature guitars different from the V-shape? Yeah, yeah, me and my friend Josh here um, <laughs> have a really, really good idea that we just need to, and with all the time I've been home, I've been locked down since mid-March, so. Yeah. So oh, there you I, I, I can kind of tease a little bit, I mean, you and I have personally worked on some really cool stuff, uh, other than the V-shape, that uh, I think that when, when it finally, uh, you know, pokes its head out and sees the light of day, I think people are going to be really, really happy with it, my personal opinion. Dude, we've got, we've got another design, if not two, in the pocket. Yeah. You know, we just got to do what we did last time and, you know, hammer out the little, take this inch off, add this little movement here, yeah. and, well. you know, It'll be just as sexy as that V, but it'll be different. Yeah, and it's hard to do. I mean, you know, obviously with this whole these whole uh, COVID limitations and so on, it makes it a little more difficult. Not impossible, because I mean, obviously we have your we have your neck shape, and you know that you know the, the fiber optics figured out. We have all that stuff figured out, but it's different when you actually tangibly hold the hold the guitar, which is what how we. Yeah, shape. now now right. you're gonna have to ship it to me. It's right. not like I can just come hang out for a couple right. of days. Like right. I miss those days, man. I thought Evan might be with you when we were doing this. Yeah. You know, he probably he probably could have been. Um, he's been pretty strapped up at least today. I know he's been dealing with a lot of things. I mean, running a uh, running a guitar company during during a pandemic is not the easiest thing in the world. So I definitely uh, credit him for that. He's uh, he's had his hands full for the last few months for sure. Um, well, I'll do my last of my first drink and I'll shoot to Evan. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> Cheers. <clears throat> So, and this is a good we'll refill it. Yeah, there you go. I'm, I'm right behind you. It's um, a sexy bottle. One see. of my favorites. Oh, look at that. What is that? I can't, I can't quite see it. It's called Dos Armadillos. Oh, Armadillo. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, shit, right? I didn't even plan that. <laughs> Perfect drink. Look at that. Um, and I know you probably got a million of these, so I guess just whatever first one comes to mind. Um, you, Dime, and Zach were obviously tight, still are. Um, Z45 underscore 70 asks, what's your best dime bag Daryl story, RIP, of course. A dime story? Is that that one? Yeah, what, what, what's your best dime bag story, RIP? The funniest dime story is one that I heard I wasn't there for. <clears throat> when I was doing my own in-stores in like 03, 04, you know, I'd, I'd go and you know how I am. I just go hang out with the people that own yeah. the place. And if they want to come out and hang with me after, that's what we do. Um, and, you know, we're getting stories and talking and having a good time, which you can't do anymore because you can't go mingle with anybody. Yeah. But some sometime in that era when I was doing those, this story came up because Dime did an in-store at the same place, I don't know, 8 to 12 months prior, whatever it was. He was in damage plan already. Obviously. Sure. Obviously. Um, um, I'm trying to think of how it came up, but <clears throat> it was about it was about dime arriving at the in store. <laughs> Let me preface this by saying I told this story at dimes. It wasn't really his wake; it was his induction into the rock. Yeah, yeah, rock and, walk. And, and, yeah, I told and, this. Uh, I told the story uh, there, and Vinnie Paul didn't know it. Oh man, I can't believe he didn't know this. So. <laughs> I'm sitting here with uh, whatever music store I'm hanging with. The guy says, yeah, Dime shows up. He pulls up in the limo, falls out of the car, shaking, just like, I'm going to get together, man. I'm going to get together. <laughs> and just just like, you know, we've all seen Dime fucked up. Yeah. Um, and the dude's all, and I, I just don't know if this thing's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to get him out of the car. And he's just shaking on the ground. And, you know, the dude's turning around, getting on his phone and, when he's not looking, Dime gets up. He's like, jerked you off, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> so, yeah, he wasn't drunk, but yeah, I'm sure he was a few, few to the, a few, definitely a few in. But um, it's a fun story that a lot of people don't know. I didn't know it. And then when I told it, Vince didn't know it. So that's, that's one of them stories that needs to get around. But, uh, he was, he was <laughs> the most golden person I ever met. He was, he's just, the guy that the one thing dime would do he would 
he would force the party on people. Oh, dude. If you're, if you're around, you had to. <laughs> and the di difference between me and him is I don't do that. You know, if you don't want to, I'm not forcing on anybody. And I'm not saying that was Dime's fault. That was Dime's fun. Yeah, that was his way, yeah. That old uh, drink, drinker where yeah, it was for real. Know, I got drunk. I got drunk on his hooch. He got drunk on my hooch, and yeah. you know we were we were closer than I think a lot of people think. Yeah, no. So <clears throat> this this is an interesting one, and 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 uh, I've uh, been had the pleasure of being in your in your presence on some of these. Um, Lee's favorite question. So this is from. Uh, ooh, how do you say this? Tequilion Ambassador Six Forty Nine. Least favorite question you get asked frequently. <laughs> Was it least favorite question? That you get asked frequently. I haven't been asked any in two years, man. So I got to really dig deep and figure this out. Um, I mean, like something like, a lot of, like when you're on the road, like or doing an in-store, doing a meet and greet, something that you hear all the time that you're just like, Okay, cool. I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you, like King, I've never seen you be rude or um, impatient with a fan ever in, I mean, you know, in the decade plus that I've known you. So, but there are, there are those questions that you get all the time. And we had a lot of recurring questions, even in this, in this Instagram post that, you know, yeah, well, it's funny. I can, <clears throat> I can respond to that because it still happens now. Um, and people that have no idea who the fuck I am. <laughs> I don't care. I don't expect anybody to know who I am. But, you know, just your random Joe or your random Sheila will come up and say, hey, did that hurt? Did what hurt? His fucking head tattoo. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's, it's like, really? I mean, that's just, that's just common sense, you know? I mean, they didn't all, it wasn't all agony, but some of them were. Um, I mean, that's just, that's just somebody breaking the ice, and, and I understand people are don't know how to make contact and sometimes people just want to make contact i get it but when yeah. you hear that question all the fucking time that's one of my that's one of my least favorites okay that's a good answer i mean you know and and, and for the record i'm sure it fucking hurt i mean because i got this aussie tribute tattoo that i just finished oh, uh, you told me about that last weekend and bro over my collarbone and my motorcycle scar jesus christ that hurt man i ain't gonna lie i mean that shit fucking hurt um <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I've had ones that hurt. The one, you know, what people don't understand is the ones on the inside of your finger. Yeah, I don't wish that that pain on anyone. Yeah, I, that I, was the worst ten that. minutes of my life. Yeah, I'm not done that yet. No, I'm or, not. no, I, I don't do. I mean, it doesn't stay. And I had quality person do it. It doesn't stay, and it's dude. I turned red immediately for ten yeah, minutes. No, Just, no, I'm I might as well have held my breath because it sucked. No, I'm out. I'm out. So. And, this, this next one is interesting because I've, I've kind of wondered this myself, to be honest with you, I never asked you about it. Um, Eight Eternal 57 asks, if you could play on stage with a musician, past or present, doesn't matter if they are alive or dead, who would it be? I remember, I did, you know, I looked at these questions a couple of times, but I didn't really dwell on them. Besides, I like to, I like to be fresh when they're asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanna, yeah, we wanted this shit to be real. <clears throat> In my idol, who is still alive is um, Rob Halford, good friend of mine, and he is the fucking metal god. Yes, he is. Somebody, somebody sh sent me last week a picture. I don't know where, probably on Instagram or something. I don't have Instagram or anything, but um, him, Rob Halford, wearing a Slayer shirt. I'm like, man, that is. If you told me that was gonna happen when I got British Steel, I would have said, who the fuck? Are, what are you, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> You know, and my idol loves my band and he supports it. How can, how can anything be better than that? Yeah, that's, I mean, that, that's huge, man. I mean, it's, that's, so, I mean, realistically, you can't just stop there though, because I mean, I was lucky enough to play on stage with Dime a number of times. Um, but dude, I would love to have played on stage with Dio. I never got the opportunity to do that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure you, I'm sure you met Bobby. Yeah. What's that? I'm sure you met Ronnie, yeah. I did meet Ronnie very late on. I didn't meet him until '05 or '06. Yeah, I, I met him. I met him the, whatever year the um, the Giants went to the Super Bowl and beat the Pats. What year was that? I couldn't tell you, but I the reason I know when I met him was um, I met him in Japan when you're doing the big 
I think it was called Beast Feast back then, Loud Park, whatever the hell. It was, you know, whatever they called it back then. And I'm sitting in the hotel bar after everybody played, and our production manager was Black Sabbath production manager. Oh. Jesse was working for us at that point. Okay. And I see Ronnie James Dio in the bar, and I was already fucking wasted. <laughs> but I'm like, he's my hero, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> if you ask me, if you ask me my top I'll five vocalists, the only reason Dio's not number two is because Halford's number one. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but I, I looked over at my friend. I said, I'm going to go meet Ronnie James Dio. And I go stumbling over there. And I was at the bar and they were at a the table. And I'm like, Charlie, why don't you introduce me to your friend? <laughs> and it was fucking <laughs> Dio. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, hey, Carrie, shook my hand. And what I did not know is Dio was like talking to sports center. Oh yeah. He didn't like one sport. He liked yeah. every fucking sport. Yeah, he did. He was like, hardcore too. You know, it was football season. It was football season and yeah. that's my fucking sport. So, yeah. you know, and it was when it was the year Chicago was good. Yeah. Um, with Rex Grossman on yeah. fucking quarterback. And, Rex you know, Grossman. no offense, Rex Grossman. You had no business being in that playoff. Yeah. But, you know, it was mid season when when the Japanese thing was going on. And I went, Brian James Dio. I don't care what AFC team gets in. If Chicago makes the Super Bowl, AFC is going to win. And we shook hands. And the next summer, we were at a festival, and I took a hundred dollars of Ronnie James Dio's money. Was that when Was that when my Colts beat the Bears? It was. That was been two thousand six. Yep. I remember that fondly. Trust me, my Colts beat the Bears. I'm like, oh, yeah, uh, that's uh. my. That's my. That's my, um, you know, get to know Dio story. And yeah, we were see, man, it's funny, pretty you know. tight immediately after that because when I saw him next time, I wasn't drunk, obviously. Um, yeah. And we became great friends. Um, <clears throat> so let's go through a couple more of these. Um, we have a few more to get through, and uh, we should be in uh, in pretty good shape. I'm having, I'm, really, I'm having a fucking blast with this, man. This is killer. Um, well, dude, I haven't seen you since, fuck, last year sometime. I know. I'm t- well, I'm telling you, December is last time. You came <laughs> to our, uh, our private uh, Armadillo AAA event. Was that December? Yeah, it was December uh, 3rd yeah. through the 5th. Yeah, it was a good time. Um, yeah, man. And we thought we'd be hanging all this year. I'm telling you, man. I mean, crying out loud. That's all right. We'll make up for lost time. Um, so the next two are, 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 are good ones. Um, H.R. Thomas Golf says, hey, Mr. King, metal sign, what's your favorite Slayer album and why? It's difficult. I know Especially it's being, that's such a deep catalog. being so involved with with all you know the music on all of them. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I've got a I've got a reference Rain and Blood. I've got a reference the Rain and Blood album because everybody, you know, around the the, the world, magazine wise, periodical wise, has said, you know, like, I've I've heard that's the greatest thrash record of all times so a number yeah. of times. Yeah, that's that's, so that's, gotta, that's I gotta give that one respect. That's, that's the fucking um, home visa thrash. I'm I'm very proud of Repentless because I think a lot of people once Jeff passed on kind of thought we were gonna fold, and we just came out and fucking crushed your face with that one. Yeah. So that was very important to me. And another one, the same situation was God hates us all because <laughs> we were kind of floating without any direction in the 90s and okay. you know the music that was popular irritated the shit out of me and i didn't understand why <laughs> it was popular and i let that get to me and that was the only time historically I ever did and god hates us all was the beginning of my saying fuck you i know what i'm here to do let's do it i like it so this is i think i think this is an obvious uh, question but uh, uh, people have asked me this before um this is from and Misha, Misha, Misha Voranis. I don't know, I don't know how to say this, uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a mark here so I know what it was. Are your chains? This is funny. Are your chains metal or plastic? Well, you know, one of the reasons <coughs> I did the chain drop at the last show was so everybody in the building could hear it, and it, uh, it wasn't something I'd planned historically you know it's just we were doing the last run and i said i want to do this on the last forum show so people take it more serious like 
King took off his chains. He left him on the stage. What the fuck, man? So people <laughs> hopefully got that this isn't one of those, you know, we're going to be back next year, coming back and do it again. It was, you know, the chains took me through Slayer. I took him off, dropped him on the stage, and I walked off, and I, that's, that was the end of Slayer for me. So, it was funny, dude. So they're, 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 totally, metal. They're, they're totally metal. There's no plastic chains on uh, oh. Carrie King. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. they're heavy as fuck. Perfect. Um, it's funny because there was photographers there because we did the after the show picture. And yeah. After that, you know, I started to walk off stage. I forgot that I was going to do it because I didn't do that every day, obviously. Yeah. And I went, oh, shit, I'm going to do the chain drop. So I turn back around and I go out there and I start to take it off, which isn't no easy task either. Sure. And I look down into the pit and I see a, a photographer that I know. and He looks up at me and he goes, oh, shit. I only told one person I was doing it. Was that so Chad? all these people had no idea what was coming. And and dude I've known for decades looked up at me like, fuck, something's happening. And I got to take a picture of this. <laughs> it was cool. It was a cool memory for me. But was that, what can I ask? I mean, you had to tell me, was it Chad? No, it wasn't Chad. No, it wasn't. Um, the dude's name escapes me, but I've known him for decades. You know, it's funny because, um, so so to, to that point, let's let's continue. So Pat76 asks, asks, what happened? It's funny, one question goes to another. What happens to the chains? What happened to the chains after you place them on the stage after the show? What did happen to them? Did you keep them? Are they, in the, they, are they still at the arena or the what? The only people I told about that. Well, yeah, that, that lasts very long. Um, but um, the only two people I told was my tour manager and my wife. He didn't know until just before the show. But I'm standing on stage after I did it, and I looked at my manager. I'm like, might want to go get those. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, you I have them. Do you still have them? You, you want to know a funny fucking story? They're in the same fucking bag I put them in at the end of that show. Okay. I mean, so you have them. I mean, Carrie, yeah, I have them. Have, okay. They're still in your possession. I mean, I would, I would love for them to be part of a hard rock display at some point, you know, but yeah, I got it right now. All right. Um, so, so let's get going again. So this is an interesting one. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't think I even know this one. Um, good Guy Jack wants to know, favorite band other than yours? I heard favorite. F favorite band other than yours? That dude's priest. That has been historically... Yeah, they had a questionable period or two, but I mean, Alfred's my hero. He's still my favorite singer ever. Um, and he still belts it out. They came back with firepower and showed everybody that they weren't done yet. Um, yeah. And beyond that, dude, fucking, I think mine and whole, both of our favorite Priest record is uh, Stain Class. Yep. Um, Great record. And, you know, yeah, Stain Class, Sad Wings, Hellbent for Leather. There's just un untouchable shit back then yeah. you know and then then they they got some popularity and defenders of a faith is it's one of my favorite albums you know and i kind of wrote it off back then because it wasn't as heavy as i liked their stuff to be but when i got reintroduced to it i went you know this is a great record yeah. um, painkiller is a great record firepower is shocked shocked the shit out of me i wanted it to be great i didn't expect it to be great and I think it's pretty great. And I got to tell you, I mean, I've seen Judas probably half a dozen times. And um, at one festival, Chad Lee, our photographer friend, and Rita Haney, you know, Dan uh, Dimes Chick, were able, and uh, my buddy Mike Spears, who uh, was Rob's assistant, was able, were able to get us in the pit. Um, at, I think it was a Rock on the Range in Columbus for a, uh, for a pre-show. And we were right in the photo pit, maybe, what, 10 feet from Rob? And I was blown away at how good those guys are. I mean, I knew they were great, but I always saw them from the 30th row or whatever, right? Or the 100th row, whatever. Back but, then, Tipton was still there, yeah? Yes. And so yeah. getting to see them from 10 Tipton, feet. Tipton is my guitar hero. I mean, oh. I love Eddie Van Halen. I love Randy Rhodes. Sure. Sure. Just Tipton connects with me for some reason. This, I thought this one, next one was interesting. Um, so guitar page number 333 wonders – did you ever get severely hurt during a Slayer concert? Because I know you guys got a lot of not. fire and a lot of shit. Well, I'm smart enough to stay away from the fire, but we didn't have that till till the latter part of our career. And it was generally behind us. 
Uh, I think the last year or two, I think the last year or two, we had it in the front. So you never fallen uh, off the so stage? So if it's behind us, just stay away from the amp line. I mean, as Let far me as tell I you a funny know. story. The only time we ever played India, I think it was the last tour Lombardo did with us. That would have been 2012. Yep. Uh, the only time I've ever been to India. And we go up for a daytime sound check. And I got to tell you, dude, that stage was the biggest load of fucking sticks and twigs fucking twined together. <laughs> and I went, there's no fucking way I'm going to play on this thing. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You know, I, I got tons of pictures of it. I'm surprised I never showed you. Um, but I got up for sound check and I went, this stage is pretty fucking sturdy. And they know how to engineer their sticks and twigs and twine. It was one of the safest stage I ever felt I was on. And that's just how they do it there. And they did it extremely well. And if anybody from India is checking this out, thumbs up, man. That was great. It's amazing, dude. Oh my but, dude, God. to look at it, I was fucking scared to death. <laughs> but, oh. Well, listen, man. Well, King, man, I, I, can't, I can't thank you enough. I mean, as a friend and as a, as a, as a guitar company to a very important artist of ours and an endorser, I mean, thank you for taking the time with us. For this first deal, I know um, I know you're in Vegas having a you know having a quarantine lockdown, Willie, and hopefully you know thank you for having some drinks with us and, and answering these questions. I know these guys, uh, you know they, they really want to hear some of this stuff and know what what your answers are. And thank you for doing that. Um, you know I can speak on behalf. Well, of dude, my I can't. Team. I didn't know it was gonna be the first one. I'm stoked. Yeah, no, this is gonna be fucking killing, man. Raiders Cup. Boom! I just got a little solo here, but um, you know we're excited to see. Um, Where's your fucking Buccaneers Cup, man? You're, you know, what kind of honest, fan are you? I'm from India. I'm a, I'm a Colts fan. I'm an AFC side. Oh, yeah, you're right. I knew that. I knew that. My but on the, on the NFC side, I'm, I'm a Bucks fan, and now we have Brady, so we'll see what happens. There was a bunch of questions about, you know, what was going to go on in the future, and I, I personally kind of stayed away from some of those, you know, uh, to kind of let, let the dust settle, let things happen. But, you know, if I know you and, and know what your worth e work ethic is, you're going to keep cranking. I know you got plans in the works, and I'm excited to see what's coming next. Well, I appreciate that. I'm fucking excited to see it because, you know, in the way things are, I can't play with anybody. You mm -hmm. know, I put my fucking, I put my songs on a goddamn phone, send it to my drummer and it's like, when are we going to get together? Yeah. Right. You know, not only do I have to worry about where he's been and yeah. I'm cool with that, but I got to worry about where people have been. That's going to be in that studio before me. You know, there's yeah. things I can't control. So I don't know. Yeah, it's crazy stuff, man. But all I can tell I'm you continuing is continuing to work, but it's definitely a hurry up and wait. It's like doing a music video. You know, yeah. you hurry up and wait. You're there, yeah. you're on time, I'm ready to work, and you can't work. Yep. Well, the good news is oh. is that, you know, we we you know between our collaboration with Carrie King and Dean Guitars, we put out a great uh signature Carrie King V for this first iteration. And uh that's, that's a little, little bulldog. I figured she'd make a make an appearance at some point. Um you know, we're going to come out with many more uh, Carrie King models throughout the years, and, and we're excited about what, what you know, what's next. And thankfully, we got a little bit more gas in the tank to do a few, you know, quite a few more things. And, and we're going to come out with a great line of Carrie King guitars and just have a great, illustrious uh, partnership, man. I'm really excited to have you in the family on behalf of myself, Evan, and everybody at Dean Guitars, man. I mean, it's, like I said, it's long overdue. We're fucking stoked. I can't wait for people to see what we come out with. And, and here, here's to you. And... Thanks for being a part of this thing and, and uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, upward and onward. And uh, we'll wait to see what Carrie King has in store. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of what we accomplished, man. Cheers to us. Yeah, dude. I can't wait, dude. And uh, thank you. And, uh, you know, hopefully we get together in person and get to cheers uh, sooner than later. Yeah. Cheers to all Slayer fans, Carrie King fans, Dean fans. Thanks for checking us out. And shit, I didn't realize this was the first one. Let's do it again. Yeah, man. All right, man, be careful. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Later.